Hey there, my name is Joe. I've been leading church production teams for the last seven years. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you our broadcast audio setup. There are a lot of great consoles on the market today, and it really comes down to what are your needs and what's your budget. My hope is that by showing you our console, you can have some fresh new ideas that you can take back to your church or even steal the blueprint for yourself. Now at our church, we are using the Waves LV1 console. We've been using it for the last couple of years and we absolutely love it. And what's great is that Waves also releases pretty frequent updates that just make it better. Now, let me give you a brief history as to how we got here and why we use this console. Like a lot of people, I started off with broadcast audio using a DAW. And this was back in 2020 where we had to get our services online. It really was the most cost-effective option for us at the time. But later that year, I came to this church that I've been at since then, and they were using the Waves LV1. Now, after using this console for about six to eight months, we really wanted to try and take uh, our, our audio quality up a notch. Specifically, we were trying to figure out how to use some samples um, for our kick and snare, maybe some new effects. And we also really wanted to figure out how we could do um, bus to bus processing or group to group processing, depending on what terminology you're used to. So for example, we would want to take our drum bus and feed it to a band bus. And that wasn't really possible at the time on this console. So we made the call to switch to Pro Tools and use it like a broadcast audio console. Now, immediately we could tell a sonic benefit. It was really helpful to be able to do all the things I just listed above. But over time, you kind of see there's some weird software bugs that would happen. And these glitches would cause audio drops or crashes in the software. And keep in mind, this is with minimal software updates to Pro Tools or the operating system updates. We kind of created the rule like do not update anything. Over time, reliability kind of became a higher priority to us. And with these occasional crashes and bug issues, we weren't really a big fan of that. We also wanted to be able to add physical I.O. and actually do a snake split to separate our inputs from front of house and from our broadcast rig. Now, this would be possible to do with Pro Tools, but we really wanted hardware that paired with a console. So after running Pro Tools for a few years, we decided to go back to the LV1 and try to find ways to work around the sampling and the groups issue. Now, we weren't able to work around the routing of groups to groups issue right away. That's actually only come in a recent firmware update. But what we were able to do was find a host to host our plugins like Slate Trigger, Valhalla Reverb, Helix Native, any of those, um, and be able to kind of route that back into the console and use it as a source. That solution is Live Professor. Now Live Professor has been out for quite some time and it's just acting as an audio rack that you can load different plugins in, route the audio in, pass it through the plugins, routes it back out to your console. So with Live Professor, we're able to run Slate Trigger, Valhalla plugins and Helix Native and anything else that we wanna run. So with that little history lesson out of the way, Let's jump into our setup. At the heart, we have a wave sound grid network that connects all of these devices together. Now our inputs are coming in from two different sources. The first is our stage grid 4000 that sits in our amp room. We have a seismic audio two-way snake split. One goes to our front of house console and then the other one goes into this stage grid 4000. Our second input source is going to be from our Hear Technologies Wave Sound Grid bridge. Essentially what this does is it takes our Dante traffic and it bridges it over to our sound grid network. From there, those two devices are added in as IO devices in our LV1 software. From the LV1 software, we're also able to route from one device that's on the sound grid network to another one. So we're able to take our kick and snare inputs and bass as well, um, directly from the SG4000 that's in our amp room and send it straight into Live Professor to be processed for Trigger and also for Helix Native. From Live Professor, we're then able to route it back into our LV1 as an input. For our outputs, all of them are routed through Dante and they hit a few different destinations. Now our main output is going um, and actually hitting our uh, video router upstairs and being married with our video signal. And then we also have a few of the Audinate AVIO dongles lying around here. So I have one that is coming out um, to our speakers here. 
I also have a TC Electronic meter over here to help us ensure that we're staying on target with our LUFs. So why don't we dive into both our live professor computer and our LV1 and show you around our show files. Okay, so let's start with what I was talking about earlier, which was uh, being able to add IO devices. And so in here, you can see we have our SG4000 uh, that is in our amp room in the back. And then we have our Here Technologies uh, Wave Sound Grid Bridge that's also here. And then here is our live professor computer that I'll show you here in a little bit. We also have our wave servers. We have two of them here. We only really use this one just as a, as a backup. It's really doing minimal processing. We don't really push the server to its maximum. And then we have two of the um, fit controllers for our LV1. We also use a stream deck to change our um, waves tune keys for pitch correction on our vocals. Jumping into our mixer, you can see here, we kind of just live on our custom layers that we've built. So we have them for drums, guitars and keys, Fox, AR, uh, which is um, our audience response mics. We have groups, effects, our speak, and then our um, computers and uh, resi and whatnot. And then this is our primary layer that we sit on during worship. And then this is just our channels that we grab um, most frequently. And then on the second mixer, which is gonna be our second pit controller, that is where all of our DCAs live. So I had mentioned earlier that when we had started with the Waves LV1, we weren't able to send a group to another group. And as of January this year, which is 2025, they've made that possible for us. And so we're able to take our drum bus and uh, drum parallel compression, our bass bus, guitar, keys, tracks, and actually feed it. You can see what we're doing here. We can actually feed it into bus number eight, which is a band bus. And uh, that has been really helpful and really appreciate that Waves did that. Now, if we jump back to drums, you can kind of see what we're doing here with our samples. We're blending um, our sampled kick that is coming from uh, Slate Trigger running on Live Professor and the sampled uh, snare drum and we're blending that in with our real drums. We're also doing that with our bass as well. Uh, we run Helix Native on our Live Professor computer and it's really just there to add some dirty bass underneath the mix and so generally that fader stays down until we get to our biggest parts and then it will get pushed up in our mix. The last thing I'll talk about is we have these scenes that we've created for Waves Tune that allow us to change the key of the song to be able to provide pitch correction to help aid our vocalists for our online mix. So now we're on our uh, Live Professor computer. So as you can see, we have uh, Slate Trigger here on our kick. And a lot of times we'll mess around with different samples um, that we might want to use for our set. And so I have two uh, up right here and snare, we tend to run a little bit more. And so um, we'll pick one that we like and we think works and check its polarity and move on. We also run Helix Native on this machine. And as you can see, I have uh, just a preset that we bought. I believe this is um, from one, uh, Adam Kisser, I believe is his name. And he's, I believe the Bethel, one of the Bethel bass players, but uh, we purchased his his pack, we just, again, we're using it as supplementation more for um, the sub dirty base that we'll occasionally add in to our mix. And then from there we have different reverbs, right? So drum verb, we're running Valhalla almost exclusively on um, most things. Now we could use Waves and again, Waves stuff is great, but Valhalla, I just, um, I've just always preferred the sound out of these reverbs personally. Um, it really does come down to personal taste. Um, except here we are using a Sound Toys Primal Tap for um, our course. And then finally, uh, I highly recommend Tonal Balance Control. Um, essentially what it does is it, you know, we put it on our master out and we set it to a specific genre. And right now I think we have it just set at modern. And that's helpful just to know like, hey, we're not too harsh in our high mids or our highs or our lows, or we're not, you know, missing low end. Um, this is just gonna give you 
a, a general overview of your mix uh, to see how you're sitting frequency wise. This does not ensure you have a good mix and I wanna be very, very clear about that. I don't want there to be any confusion. I do find this as a valuable tool once I feel like I have the mix in an okay place, I can look over at tonal balance control and just double check and make sure I don't have any weird frequencies um, lacking or, or popping up. So that is our Waves LV1 setup that we use to mix our online services. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, or you just want to chat about church production topics like gear or leadership, be sure to drop a comment down below. I love talking about this stuff. If you found this content valuable, hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.